Good traders and welcome to our Trading Week Ahead broadcast. I'm Ken Calhoun, your host, coming at you live here from Colorado in the U.S. of A. on Saturday, April the 10th, 2021. As always, all information is for educational use only. I'm not making advice about what to buy, sell, or hold. And by watching this, you agree to not make actual trades, but use it for education use. Anyway, S&P finally broke 4,000 and we're in a very strong directional uptrend. Now, as uh, one of you had pointed out, we do have earnings season coming up, and so that may slow down or accelerate the breakout, depending on whether earnings meet expectations and what kind of misses or beats the various companies have. So do pay attention to the earnings releases and lots of trade opportunities because of the gaps that will be shown in each day's session. It's a really good time to consider joining my live trading room trading the open because we'll be going over the gappers that go through all of the uh, earnings release cycle in the upcoming several weeks as well. So if you're not yet a member of trading the open, do consider it. I've been running this since the year 2000. We do a lot of in-depth detailed work with very specific entries and exits and live Q&A five days a week via go-to webinar. So go to trademastery.com forward slash live is the link, or you can just type in tradingtheopen.com and that'll take you over here. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program. So the S&P is in an uptrend. Uh, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna make it simple. I'm gonna use 40.50 as S1 and 41.50 as, R, as R1. So resistance is 41.50, support right, right, we should say right under the 40.50, say 40.30. It's a low of this window candle, height just around 40 30 or so so that's the that would be the warning sign if the market loses 4,000 it may well be due for a relatively large pullback or drop so 4,000 is kind of the key major support area for the market and that's what everyone will be watching next week the other key indicates so those are the main things to pay attention to is s p 4,000 next week do we continue to stay above it and if we do I'm going to take a shot at some really good high quality stocks and I'll show you what I'm trading right now. And as soon as I show you the VIX, I'll show you what I'm trading currently in just a minute. Anyway, the VIX finally lost 20. That's a really major support level that most Wall Street traders are using as support. You can see the double bottom here. So and then the handle here and then the breakdown here. Do keep an eye on the VIX. It's very unusual for it to stay under 20 for any length of time. In fact, this is the first time it's been under 20 in uh, a very, very long time. So for that reason, volatility indicator is down. Uh, that's kind of a key significant um, measure that I want you to pay attention to. As long as we stay under 20, we won't have a long bias market, but the instant, so this is the other tip. Remember I said if the S&P loses that 4,000, that's gonna be a key place to start liquidating, going to cash and equities. The other signal is it's not so intuitive, not so obvious I should say, is if the VIX gets back over 20, you don't want to be adding or scaling into stocks or initiating new swing trades because the VIX is kind of an inverse instrument when it when it's up when the market's down and it's down when the market's up so the fact that it's down here is of note the other thing to pay attention to in line with that is uvxy which is tied to the vix it's way down here at five and i think that's way oversold so i bought a bunch of it on friday uh, a few hundred shares we'll see if it bounces but uh, UVXY had been, you know, at the start of the year, it, was, it stayed above 10 for the longest time. 10 had been a key support level in UVXY. For a very long time, and then it ran up to 15. Then it consolidated, then dropped, and I think it's getting overdone down here, so. I don't have support of a hammer and I don't have a bullish engulfing. So you do wanna possibly wait for that for a reversal sign. But the fact of the volatility of this instrument being such as it is, is I think there's a really good opportunity to play the upside pivot in this thing. So we'll see where it goes coming up. 
So do keep an eye on the UVXY in instrument, the ETN, next week as well. Let's take a look at some charts that are in motion. A couple of favorites. My two favorite momentum charts in motion right now are Apple and Yum Brands. Yum Brands, uh, you know, they have Taco Bell and all these other fast food restaurants. Uh, Yum has done a really nice cup and handle breakout above the 112 here. And I like the volatility. It's a really strong, had a strong Tuesday, right? Going from 111 to one, just under 115. And it's still trending upward. So Yum Brands looks really good. And what I also like is the recent strength in Apple's sharp move up the last week. You can see it's been dominated by buyers going up from 120 to 132, and there's no end in sight. And I had an especially good day yesterday. We'll look at the intraday chart in just a few minutes. So those are a couple of favorites, but let's take a look at a list of charts you may want to consider looking at for next week. I'm either trading these myself or I'm considering them. I'm currently long all of these down here. I'm long FCX, Disney, Yum, Cat, Apple, and Darden. Anyway, as our reopening plays are gonna be things like casinos, restaurants, hotels, cruise ships, anything that benefits from an outdoor, an outdoor public. So MGM, my favorite casino stock has ran all the way from 20 to 40 over the last few months here. And you can see it's poised for a new breakout. A bear shoot, shooting star, that red, there's a red shooting star up there back on Tuesday. That's this candle right there. That so says to sell under the 40, well, right under support around 41.20. The main signal on this is to go long if, and not until it gets above the high of the shooting star over 43. And again, do be sure to learn from my colleague, Steve Nesson, uh, exclusively the world's foremost authority on Japanese candlestick charts. Everyone else just kind of read Steve's books and copied them. Why would you do that? Don't go out like that. Learn from Steve Nissen and candle charts. We did a really good session together a few weeks ago. It was our best webinar ever, at least one of the, in the easily in the top three and uh, really popular with active traders for intraday candles. Anyway, the point is MGM looks really good if it breaks 43. Next up, Southwest looks beautiful, right? Taking off from the runway, going all the way from 50-ish up to 64 here. You can see Southwest Airlines ticker LOVE, L-U-V, currently just under 65. And I'm gonna buy that myself if it breaks 65. Mo, I didn't get in yet, but I was looking to break, buy it over 50. It's still consolidating. I'm gonna wait for it to break 53, but Altria, formerly known as Philip Morris, <coughs> cough, cough, inside joke there. Go ahead, well, not so much an inside joke, but a joke. Anyway, ran 42 to 52, a nice 10 point run in Philip Morris. It's got really good directional volatility, classic 45 degree angle breakout, and it looks great. I do expand coverage of our, uh, in our live room for swing trading charts. So that's one thing that we are expanding coverage in the live room. So it's not just for day traders. We do a lot of swing trading, Q&A and chart picking and all the rest of it as well in my trading open room. Anyway, uh, Mara, M-A-R-A had a really good run. We've continued to look at it. We'll see if it breaks out to new high over 58 in the upcoming week ahead. I already mentioned this lumber one cut. That one looks good for a steady uptrend. I'm going to buy some over 38 over the nearest whole number. I'm currently long Darden Group because it's a good restaurant play for reopening. And you can see DRI parent of uh, Olive Garden and Longhorn Steakhouse and many others. And what's the name of the seafood restaurant? The, sea, the fancy seafood restaurant. Anyway, Darden Group owns a bunch of them uh, and it's it's a really good play to the upside. Yeah, Red Lobster, thanks. Thanks, Trey. It's been a while since I've been to Red Lobster. It's been a year since I've been out to restaurants. I miss them. Anyway, Apple looks good for the bounce. Caterpillar, also in a, another good play for in, infrastructure. You know, if they're gonna build roads and highways and bridges, things like Caterpillar and other 
heavy equipment manufacturers may be a good place on a continued run up and you can see it's been benefiting from the run all the way from 160 to 240 just under 240. And yum looks tasty that's my favorite breakout chart of this list so far because it's up at a high and nothing but green candles and upward price action going from 110 to 115. and yeah you're right yeah right trey yeah where's uh, home builders i need to buy me some xhb right thank you sir see you said home builders and i know how to trade it uh, the home builders etf yeah i hit that i'm gonna buy that myself thanks Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, real estate's on fire as people are moving out of big crowded cities and into the burbs. Uh, they're building housing developments all over the place, like here in Colorado Springs. But yeah, thanks. That's a good reminder. I will hit that. I'm going to buy that over, say, 74. So Home Builders, XHB, ETF, a really good play. Nice, good, consistent uptrend. Report McMoran Copper Metals continues to look good as well. Now, one thing to expect is the unexpected. Bum, 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 bum. Always expect that, for example, earnings season coming up, right? So we got new earnings out to bat this next couple of weeks. And so we may have some rocky days. We may have pullbacks or whatnot. One thing that one Talking Head mentioned, and he's correct, is that there's usually three-day three day cycles for pullbacks or slowdowns. Oftentimes, you'll see uh, rushes to the upside in three, four, five days. The pullbacks tend to last up to around three days before the resumption of the trend. So take that into account as well. Now let's take a look at some intraday charts. Actually, we can just use this chart. This was our biggest winner yesterday, Fubo, F-U-B-O. What a run. This guy ran all the way from 21.8 all the way to 25 and change. One thing that my traders are absolutely thrilled with is the fact that unlike anyone else in the world, I have specific entry triggers identified ahead of time before the bell. And then I update them in market. So for example, yesterday I called it long when it was down at 2160 or so. I said we go long in Fubo if it gets over 218. And then live in market, I called the exit, not at the exact, I didn't get the exact bottom or the exact top, but I got a big, huge win. And that was the biggest win of the week for our live room was yesterday. I said to go long ahead of time if it bounced over 21.8. Sure enough, it did. We had a repeated sequence of entries and exits on the way up and the final exit call was up at 24.7. Does everyone understand why day trading this type of chart is immensely more intelligent? Than trading those stupid under ten dollar low float scalping stocks that some of these yahoos out there uh, voice on the public. Uh, professional traders, you want charts that have consistency, and that's what I specialize in at Trading Open. I like focusing on charts with consistent patterns. Now this illustrates, and by the way, this illustrates one of my favorite, my single favorite pivot pattern, my favorite bounce pattern. It's not as something. It sold off down here and trying to make a little move. My favorite pivot pattern is buying into strength. And that's buying on a gap bill to find support off the previous day's high. So that's the number one pivot pattern in the book. And I've tested this with thousands of real money trades uh, over the decades. And it's it's a really good pattern. So it gaps up, then it rolls over and goes down to the prior day's high at which point you say, aha, I've been here before. I've danced this dance. I've played this music. I know how this guy works. We hit along here with the hard stop there. And that's that was a long trigger for our members yesterday exclusively. Of any place in the world, the people got that 21.8 long trigger. And others, you can say I followed Rice and uh, Mara and AFMD and CELC and others. But anyway. That was a really good play in 
Ubo. Bum, 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 bum. Rice was another good one for us. I called it long at 14.8. That was an inside breakout above the uh, right, right above a previous little peak there earlier in the morning. You know, we ran 14.8 all the way up to 16 and a half, and then just kind of slowly kept getting buyers all afternoon and ending up at the high near, near the 17 and change. Wow, is this true? This thing was trading after market at 18.19 a share. Yep, it was. This is an interesting chart. I have it plot. I have it plot data after the close. This was the close right here at 4 p.m. East Coast time. Aftermarket to the right of the arrow there, to the right of the cool looking blue cursor. That's all the aftermarket price action going from 1720 up to a high of just under 1880. So. Anyway, good to have your handy dandy aftermarket chart so you can follow price action as well. The point is, I said, told my traders we before it got to that, I said we'd go long over 1480. That's a perfect entry, right? You could have made potentially a really good trade if you'd bought 148 and sold at 158 or 168 or whatever. So one to two point winner for us on rice on Friday yesterday. Open this up a little bit more. Apple, which I thankfully bought uh, on Thursday. <laughs> it's either Wednesday or Thursday, I bought me some Apple and a really nice breakout to the upside in Apple. Tasting good. Nobody's taken a bite out of it. It's continued to race on up from a base of 130 up to just around 133 into the close yesterday. And I'm a big proponent of Apple. I think I completely agree with Kramer. You own it, you don't trade it. Uh, if you trade it, it's when to buy, right? Anyway, looks like a really good chart, and Apple's a good play for swing traders as well. And let's see a question from Hori. What are the time frames you use? Well, for intraday trades, I like to go either the scalp on the open. But I like to I like to hold my intraday trades, you know, up to all day long, but often as long as on the long side of anywhere from uh, 45 minutes to an hour. The classic scalping, I think, is very risky and dangerous. I, I cut my teeth scalping back in the 90s, but I think trying to trade within a three to five minute round trip is beyond the ability of most people. And it's also the least consistent method. It's the most error prone trying to scalp large size for open range, quick minute or two or three minute nibbles. So I, I think that's a really stupid way to day trade. I think it's much smarter to plan your trades ahead of time and expect the, that it will be at least 20 minutes, you know, 20 minutes to an hour or two or even all day long if it keeps running up all day. So play a more leisurely approach to day trading with my live room at tradingtheopen.com. There's those Fubo and Rice examples from yesterday. In the live room, we give you a lot of things to learn from and I like to run these very much like a live day trading seminar. You can see the workstation so you can see breakouts instantly as they happen. One thing that I <clears throat> did create back in February, just a, a couple of months before last, is this top 10 day trading chart patterns. And this has been really popular because it's got so many new members. It's uh, very brief and it's got my top 10 patterns. Like that gap fill pivot pattern is one of the one of those 10 patterns. And that's available to you uh, as a trial member. And it's a money back guarantee too, and it's only 29 for the trial. So give it a shot. I'm going to raise that up later this year, but for now it's still just 29. Anyway, trading the open live room, you can get to it at trademastery.com forward slash live. Try it out for a couple of weeks. You know, completely risk free. It's only 29 bucks for two full weeks. 
and you get charts like this, right? Explained kind of like wrapped up in a, a silver bow or what's the phrase I'm trying to say? Wrapped up in a, a package from start to finish with entries and real-time exit calls. That's another thing too that I started to do just recently that's a new feature of the room is have both live entry and exit calls in real time. So that you, there's no guessing, no guessing, no gambling, no wondering, no uncertainty. I solve the market to the best of my ability for you each morning ahead of time. And so I give you specific entries and exits in the markets, unlike anyone else out there that's just read. I can't believe people are in other rooms where they don't tell people where exactly to enter and where exactly to exit. What good is that? It would be a room where, I, mean, I guess it's a little good if people are randomly talking about charts of the day, that's something where the magic happens, where the professionalism happens, is having specific. What separates out professionals who know what they're talking about, like myself and my competitors that just do a bunch of hogwash, is I give specific alert entries and specific alert exits from start to finish, along with uh, targets and stops, and more importantly, the chart pattern that's been illustrated, which is why I run the room, is teach you guys a chart pattern. So this is a gap fill reversal, right? A gap build down to the previous day's high and bounce. That's your number one pivot play. Now, of course, most of them aren't going to work out this well going up, you know, three or four points or whatever, but often it's good for a really significant bounce. So do instead of trying to bottom fish things that are down at two day lows or gapping down and crashing and burning, it's smarter to trade pivots and things that had shown some strength by virtue of their gaps up pre market, then had some temporary weakness. And then the buyers came back in and then some. So and again, I give you specific walkthroughs on these in the live room. So good stuff. One of the things I'm a big fan too of is break even stop. So now I generally cover instruments under $30, $40 a share, like Fubo. This guy was a nice runner too, right? EYES, must have been some news around from 8.30 to 10.30. And this is called a bull flag, where something runs up, makes kind of a, kind of a pullback slash flag pattern and you go long above the flag high or the price action high up here. And we ran all the way up here, and then it ran all the way back down there. This provides a really good example <clears throat> of my whole number strategy, and that's where you automatically exit. <clears throat> Let's say you bought 930. One of the things that I teach my traders in the live room to do is I always say new traders sell it all now, right? Right under, always right under whole number. And you may have seen my article in Stocks and Commodities Magazine for this very specific strategy in which you go long slightly above a whole number. So in this case, slightly above the $9 mark, the nine, <clears throat> 920, 930, wherever, somewhere slightly above the whole number and finish up the trade, go to cash, book a profit right under the nearest whole number, which in this case was 10. So that's how you dodge a bullet for these up and down pop and drop runners, you know, that you want to buy right above a whole number and then tighten in a trailing stop or just go to cash and book the profit once it hits the 0.9 or the 0.8 under the nearest whole number. And that way, you know, the goal is to keep you from struggling through a reversal because it doesn't do you much good if you buy it, say 930 and then sit on it and it comes back down to 880 or 930 or something. Instead of booking a profit, you'd be booking a break even or a stop loss. So. It's really important to understand that type of a professional entry and exit method methodology. And that's one thing I spend a lot of time teaching traders about. One thing to avoid is what I call inside range charts. Out charts like uh, 
the Palantir looks good, right? PLTR. Again, it broke above the previous day's high and was good for a bit. But other charts, like say Tesla, it opened inside the range and just kind of dropped and do a whole lot. GameStop, I called it short at 162 yesterday for members for a uh, day trade plan. It ran eight points, so 162 all the way to the double bottom there near 154. Game over for GameStop. One of the points is avoid charts that are chopping around inside their previous day's ranges. Let me see if I can find one for you. Like this. This we don't have any clarity on. This is the LI is the tickers in Lima Indigo. You can see it's currently chopping around inside the range. That doesn't give us any confidence that buyers are really strong or sellers are really strong. Instead, we want charts that are up above the previous day's high to start with. Like this one, right? That's where you play with is charts that are up above the prior day's high. That's a good point. Felix is saying you're right about that. No one gives entry and exit points. Even some of the other famous traders out there never do. Yeah. I see a question from Tom. Hey, Tom. What course do I recommend for learning about chart patterns? I've got dozens of courses about overall trading, my trade mastery course, which had been a, a very expensive, well, not very expensive, about well, 100 bucks a month, uh, once a month webinar series. I turned that into a downloadable course, uh, over 15 hours of training, I think it is for under 497. For general training, my trade mastery course is good. For specific chart patterns, the live room is the best way to learn because that's where I go over the patterns and the patterns morph the patterns change a little bit over time based on relative strength or weakness of the market so a cut pattern in a sideways market should be traded completely different than a cut pattern in a uptrending market versus a downtrending market so the simple patterns need to be taken in context with the broad market and the sector or the industry group within which the instrument being traded is That's a question from Jorge to get the PDF. You go in the live room. Yeah, once you join my live room, which you should, uh, you can get the link by clicking on the chat, uh, the text box, and there's the link to the uh, PDF of the top 10 patterns. And again, I just uh, recorded that, or I just screen capped those back in February and put some explanatory notes and all that. So it's a really good uh, ebook and it shows you the 10 patterns. And the reason that I put that together well, so that especially for all the new folks who've been joining the room, it's really popular. A lot of new members lately uh, in the live chat room, uh, it gives you kind of like the library of chart patterns that we cover. So that, that way you are hit the ground running and see the kind of patterns that work out the best. You're right, Tom, there is a lot to learn. It's extremely much longer than one would think. Or learning curve. Hey, Ahmed, how are you doing from Texas, man? Say, hey, Ken, you're the best as a day trader, difficult for others. I think you're blessed with very strong reflexes and a mind coordination. Well, thanks, I appreciate that. Thanks for the comment. Let's see, Jane is asking, how do I filter for potential setups? Well, it's all based on volume and volatility and patterns that I know from experience tend to work out more often than not. So uh, we don't use squiggly line indicators like VWAP. We don't use outdated level two or level three. Uh, we look at very specific setups, whether it's gap continuations or other plays. And my favorite setup is always gonna be somewhere right above the previous day's high. And so that's where you wanna look for your breakout. So anyway, for more, do be sure to join my live room. Friends, we're about out of time. I wanted to thank y'all for being here. And hopefully that gives you some food for thought. Remember stocks like uh, Yum Brands and Apple look really good. And we've got our other momentum plays that tells me our time is up. So I'm gonna wrap up for today. I wanted to thank all of you for being here. Echo off. Echo, hasta la vista. Echo. Hasta la vista.
And I want to say goodbye to all you guys too. So thanks for being here. Do try the room. You have my word. It's very hard working. I do a lot of work for you guys. So you don't have to. And I give you the very specific entry triggers and the answer key. And I update these live throughout the morning. And I often give multiple entries like Fubo and Rice are giving multiple entries. So that, that way, even if you miss the first entry, uh, there's always going to be a second chance. And I always give, give uh, multiple entries. So if you miss the first one, there's a second chance. And I also tell the exits for the ones that start to run for us so you know exactly how to manage your exit as well. So no other live room in the world does it the way I do it. And I wanted to encourage all of you to join and try it out. It's only 29 bucks for a couple of weeks. So and join me starting Monday, and we'll be looking at the markets together as a team. So anyway, best wishes for success in your trades. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, we do have, we're adding swing trade tickers that are updated, you know, every day or two as well. So lots to learn, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you folks in the room. So have a peaceful and safe weekend, and thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye for now.